All right, let's catch up on uh, what's going on with the teacher protests uh, across the country. And uh, this has been really encouraging. It started in West Virginia, and it spread to Arizona and Oklahoma and to Kentucky. Um, Oklahoma teachers, as you know, won concessions from lawmakers uh, uh, amongst their, their walkout. They got uh, raises, but they stayed out on strike to get uh, more government funding for education, broadly speaking. They got basically, what was it, like $40 million, I think it was, not much at all. But they basically said, all right, we're going to roll this up and we're going to um, we're going to vote out. They've just uh, the union leader just and I don't know. Uh, I think there's, just, there's still some people out protesting, but the uh, union leaders in Oklahoma have ended the nine day statewide strike. Um, there's like I say, seeing a, a little bit of, uh, of increase in funding for education, uh, but basically they said um, the union is going to um, focus on getting rid of the governor, I guess. Um, They've got their 40 million. They're going to try and uh, get the vote out. And I don't know if it's 2018 or uh, 2020. I'm not sure when this Oklahoma governor gets out, but um, they feel like they have exhausted their means it'll it remains to be seen what the um what the uh rank and file say but um that's ringing some alarm bells for me i mean isn't that how the strike actions uh ended up petering out in wisconsin yeah whenever you try to go the route of electoral politics like why why like they have so much power to withhold their labor why would they not just keep going for it you know well, I mean, I think uh, the I'd, I don't know. I mean, I might my guess would be that they have assessed that they have played their cards for the time being. They got the forty million dollars. That's not enough uh, in their in their minds. But I this mean, is the, as much as they're going to get right now. Did you know that in some places in Oklahoma, school is down to four days a week now? Um, yes, I did know that actually. That's crazy. Uh, It's crazy. People still have to work five or more days a week. It's crazy. Um, it's hard to know what the dynamic is in terms of, um, how strong the, those associations are. I mean, the, the union there, I don't know how strong the union is, how much it has ability to provide for teachers who are out, um, striking. I don't know. I don't know uh, more of the details, to be honest with you. But yes, it does have some uh, reminiscence to what the energy turned a little bit too quickly into uh, electoral politics in uh, in Wisconsin. At least that's my m- m- my feeling about that as well. Um, but that's what's going on in Oklahoma. In Kentucky, there hasn't been quite, I don't know if I would call it strikes, but there's been protests. There's been some walkouts, maybe uh, some uh, some sick outs. Bevin, uh, Matt Bevin, the governor there, apparently uh, couldn't help himself. He's opposed these uh, teachers' rallies. They want pension protection. <laughs> Those disgusting entitled, bastards. Entitled. Title bastards. Entitlement society. Uh, they want increased public education funding. Ugh. Just so greedy, these teachers. So greedy. Imagine, I'm sorry. I'm so, imagine if he literally came out and was like, oi. Oi, you're Bevin. so greedy. Oi. <laughs> well, here's what he uh, came out to say. This is, um, he's so concerned about the children, folks. So concerned about the children. The teachers from across the state. I mean, the number, I saw a lot of people hanging out, shoes off, even early in the morning, hanging out, smoking, hanging out, leaving trash around, taking the day off. Pause yeah, it. What's crazy. He's referring to the teachers. They're out there with their shoes off, smoking. Nobody in Kentucky smokes, incidentally. They're not like one of the top tobacco producing states in the country. But they're out there smoking, shoes off. Teachers smoke. Teachers what? smoke, Littering. taking the day off, taking the day off. Polluting the environment. Teaching right. kids how to smoke. <laughs> right. like, Come here. Right. You got a day off because we're striking. <laughs> Here's what you really do. You get yourself a government got job and you smoke and you can do nothing, young man.
You know, here's what's crazy to me. You know how many hundreds of thousands of children today were left home alone? I guarantee you somewhere in Kentucky today a child was sexually assaulted that was left at home because there was nobody there to watch them. I guarantee you somewhere today a child was physically harmed or ingested poison because they were home alone because a single parent didn't have any money to take care of them. I'm offended by the idea that people so cavalierly and so flippantly disregarded what's truly best for children. You know how many children live in, in urban communities and rural communities where there's a single parent who literally, if they could afford to skip work and not lose their job, they couldn't afford to because they need the money. They don't have a backup for them. They don't get paid whether they go to work or not. They don't have an option. And some of them were given literally a matter of hours. So you know for a fact that there were hundreds of thousands of children who were left unattended. And some of them in communities where people knew that for a fact and took advantage of it. And as surely as we're having this conversation, children were harmed, some physically, some sexually. Some were introduced to drugs for the first time because they were vulnerable and left alone. It's offensive, frankly, it really is. If you want to write a story, that's the kind of thing you guys should talk about. And now is when he launches in to a heartfelt cry for paid sick leave for uh, single parents, where he looks for, for, for support for families who are living and not uh, able to, uh, to take a day off. In fact, he wants to expand a whole suite of laws and protections for workers so that in situations like this they're empowered to take care of their children. No, sorry. In fact, I would bet that it's almost impossible for someone to point to a single piece of legislation that this guy has signed or promoted that helps any of the people he mentioned. Any of the people, survivors of sexual uh, assault, um, uh, uh, keeping uh, drugs out of the hands of, uh, of kids or drug education or, um, you know, uh, support for single parents. Or I, I, I bet there is not a single piece of legislation that he has ever supported or signed or even discussed that has any impact on any of those people that would be helpful in any respect to those people. This is so... This is so illustrative, though, because the uh, for Republicans, this is, I mean, I'm sure people have picked up on this, but the only time that you will ever hear them talk about people dealing with uh, structural poverty as an example or any of the things that he mentioned in that litany that isn't the product of their social, personal, or genetic indeed. Now we're back to freaking genetic defects. The only time they'll, they will address a social cause that the people who are victims of structural inequity are the result of is when they're attacking teachers. That is the only time that you will ever hear what he just said as like not, you know, irresponsible single mothers who can't handle themselves neglecting their kids. When it goes, right, that's the only other time you'll hear that. But right. when it comes to the teachers, then it's like you got these overworked, impoverished families and the teachers are just letting them down. Uh, just, uh, uh, for instance, in terms of, uh, uh, Matt Bevan, here's a heartwarming story about Matt Bevan caring about those people back all the way back in, uh, almost two months ago, Kentucky governor countersues over Medicaid work requirements. He's stopping a lawsuit filed by critics of the state's plans to institute Medicaid work requirements. He's so concerned about those single mothers who are there with kids that are getting health care that if they're not out of the house leaving their kids at home, <laughs> right? They're young kids at home. Uh, he's actually like countersuing. Oh my God, he's going to do a Paul Ryan. He's going to say that some elementary school kid, we had him up to him and he was just like, you know, the kids who get private insurance feel so much better about yeah, themselves. Yeah, exactly. I want, I want a packed lunch in private insurance because Medicaid just makes me feel out of the system. Like I'm not really working for it. I want to earn That's my offensive. own inhaler. They just don't have the ability to have the, the pride right. in having privately right. provided health insurance. Pride of Humana. Offensive. Offensive. Totally offensive. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what the implications of 
these teacher strikes are going to be um, as we go forward. I mean, one, I think it's like broadly empowering the labor movement. Uh, it's also providing, particularly in these states, some form of template for the reality that we're going to see Come June, I guess, when uh, we get a decision from the Supreme Court on Janus, which is where you have um, teachers unions and public sector unions that are not uh, that are working in non closed shops. And they're going to have you're going to have unions negotiating on behalf of a lot of people who are not paying for that service. Um. In Kentucky, you had uh, lawmakers just on Friday overriding Matt Bevin's veto of a two-year state budget that increases public education spending with a $480 million tax increase. I mean, it gives you a sense of what the politics are here. And Kentucky teachers have not asked for a raise. They just want the day off so they can go out and smoke and take their shoes off. I don't want to raise, man. I just want less responsibility to educate our youth. <laughs> but they want the pensions they were promised. And remember. Oh, what, what slobs? Yeah, disgusting. <laughs> disgusting. Just absolutely disgusting. Oh, 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 you've taught for 30 years and you think you deserve some type of like dignified uh, retirement? I just well, want you to honor your that. contracts, man. Yeah, right. Honor your contracts. <laughs> Incidentally, understand that these pensions are simply deferred compensation. That's all it is. And it's a break for the employer. And by the way, wasn't that one of the reasons that we couldn't claw back bonuses when we were bailing out Wall Street? Because right. of contractual, contractual obligations. Contractual things for AIG or two sacrosanct. Literally for people who committed yes. fraud, the reason was contractual obligation. Um, they're also interested in education funding, broadly speaking. So that's disgusting. Um, we plead for when we're high, man. The best part is it's uh, the raise in uh, taxes, yeah. 50 cent increase in the cigarette tax. So oh, on one hand, Bevan's going to see a lot less people out there smoking uh, when they protest him next time. I'm kind of tired of, I don't even smoke, but I feel like smokers just, they, they're asked to bear the burden of everything. Just raise some taxes on some goddamn financiers and let the smokers yeah. have a break. Jesus. Well, it's probably good in terms of knocking off the uh, fair enough the use of those. Everybody switched to, to vaping, anyways. Now, yeah, that's what's happening. Probably not in Kentucky, buddy. Yeah. Not in Kentucky so much. Um, so good for the teachers, and hopefully this um, this spreads. I mean, right oh, yeah. now it's been basically in the states that have had the most draconian cuts to education and the lowest teacher salaries across the country, places like West Virginia, Oklahoma, um, Arizona, and Kentucky. But hopefully we'll see, um, see this spread a little bit more. And I ho hopefully there are, you know, national uh, teachers uh, union folk who are going in and, and getting ideas for, um, that can be spread to other unions across the country in terms of the way that these unions are building relationships in the community. Because at the end of the day, this is the most important thing, is that you have broad-based support that is outside of the specific industry that you're working in. Uh, not, and not just labor support in terms of other unions, but of citizens' uh, support. And that's the whole idea between uh, behind so, uh, social movement unionism, is to get the union... Uh, to build some solidarity with other folks who are working on other issues that, you know, may at first seem totally tangential, but are in fact, um, you know, intricate to a to a broader struggle. So, hell yeah, all good stuff there.